The U.S. economic recovery is stalling. Let's have a look. Good evening, everyone. Florian Heiser here, and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. I thought we'd have a look at this article from Yahoo Finance, just discussing the stalling U.S. economy. And don't worry, I've got my evening Stein of coffee right here, as always. Now, the reason I thought we'd look at that, well, some viewers are asking me to look at the U.S. economy and U.S. content, and it is very important to Australia. There's significant U.S. investment into Australia. Some of the largest mining or gas projects, well, U.S. companies are paying for them. They're also a big source of our tourism, decent portion of our trade, and they're, you know, one of Australia's oldest allies. But there was a, a narrative in the U.S., you know, that they've had the best economy ever. And there'll be a bounce back and a V-shaped recovery there. It's, well, fanaticism in some regards, the hope that that can happen. And we are all following U.S. politics, well, frankly, because it is much more entertaining than anything we have here in Australia. Anything we have here in Australia. It's going to be very interesting to see the first debates coming out of this election. You know, Sleepy Joe and, and Trump. It'll be, hey, regardless of what you think, it's going to be fun to watch. So let's jump over here and we'll just have a look. Let's look at some figures. We'll look at some figures. We'll look at the index. I mean, you can look at the Dow Jones. We'll bring that open. And the NASDAQ 100 and the S&P 500. We can have a look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average. And you can see here it's sitting at 26,469. And how much of that is just being pumped up, pumped up by money printer GoBro, by the Federal Reserve over there printing money like crazy. We can look at the NASDAQ. We can see the same thing. I mean, it... it it hit an all-time high, everyone. An all-time high in the midst of a global pandemic, a global recession, trade dropping, unemployment rates that are unheard of in the United States. It hit an all-time high. <laughs> There's just... And here you can even bring up... We can bring up the, the biggest companies. Look at Tesla. 1400 bucks. Oh, wait, it's gone down a bit. You know, oh, there we go. It's over 1600 It's going down. Maybe now's the time to short it, guys. You want to make some money off those those hipsters buying the Tesla stock? All these businesses that don't make any money? It's just... It feels like we're in a clown, clown world. Or the market's topping and it's just going to plunge back down. The S&P, same thing. Didn't reach an all-time high. Didn't get over 3000 Was that an all-time high? We'll jump to 50 years. Oh, yeah, obviously. There you go. Maybe it's time to follow it down. Maybe it's time to follow it down. Let, let me know if you've got the, the chutzpah to do it. Chutzpah to do it. So, the US economic recovery is stalling, and it may get even worse. Well, I don't think it actually was recovering. I think the market was going up because money printed go brewer, and people were hoping, they were hoping, hoping that, well, you know, what they were looking at was good good deals, good prices. Let's bring up this here from Hertz. This is a good example that I like to draw attention to. It's the trap that people fall into where they're thinking, oh, you know, this, look at this company, look at Hertz, look how cheap it is. It's at $4, everyone. Pile in, pile in. Guaranteed to make money once the re economy rebounds. So it should, look at, look at how it shot up, guys. Look at that. Look at that climb. Boom, up it went. And that was portion of Robin Hood People who had shares and hurts and they went bankrupt. It went bankrupt. So are we seeing, you know, are people saying there's an economic recovery because the share market's high? Businesses that don't make any money, any profit, are overvalued. Is that a sign of a recovering economy or is it that is that just showing us where? Showing us where money supply is entering the market. And I want to bring up this quote here, everyone. Introduce, introduce you to this concept. I'm sure ma many of the regulars have seen it. For some people, it may be the first time. The Candlon effect refers to the change in relative prices resulting from a change in money supply. Perhaps money supply that was handed out to, you know, a multitude of people, everyone, you know, in government stimulus checks, and then had resulted in this Robin Hood mess. The change in relative prices occurs because the change in money supply has a specific injection point and therefore a specific flow, flow path through the economy. So it's flowing through the share market. So all this money that's being created is creating a bubble, a bubble in shares. We can see it right here, guys. Because <laughs> do you think, do you think uh, Hertz is worth it? Do you think it's going to bounce back? 
So it's creating a bubble in shares in the markets. And now maybe, maybe it's just the time for that to cool off. We'll have to see. So the official numbers have begun to confirm what many Americans feel in their bones. The economy is buckling once again. Despite assurances from the Trump administration that better times are at hand, the worsening pandemic is restraining or even snuffing out the economy's nascent recovery. From restaurant dining to air travel and now to filings for unemployment benefits, a growing body of evidence indicates America's rebound from the pandemic is stalling days before hundreds of billions of dollars worth of federal aid is set to expire. Now, we'll have to see what happens with that aid. Do you think they'll they'll let it expire? I mean, there's stories upon stories of people being better off on unemployment in the States. Businesses taking on these loans. So they have to take on these loans that could be forgiven, which may mean they may not be forgiven. And then their workers not wanting to return to their jobs because they're better off on the unemployment. Law lawmakers may eventually iron out an agreement on a new stimulus package, but for now they remain far apart on many of the key details. Whether the talks are ultimately successful or not, one thing is now crystal clear. Until a vaccine or effective treatment for the pandemic is available, the world's largest economy will be at best post-tepid uneven growth, and at worst, endure an extended period of malaise or even a depression. So, I mean, this is definitely going to be interesting times moving forward. And I don't think the United States will do anything other than intervene in the market one way or another. And perhaps we're starting to see the manifestation of well, people's concerns with the rampant money printing in the precious metals. In gold at 1900, as I'm recording this, and silver at 2274 US, US dollars an ounce. You know, because that's the thing. What would you have confidence in? That this, I, I think, you know, uh, a currency that's actually backed by something or a currency that is required to avoid punishment, to pay, to pay, to avoid going to jail. What would you prefer? You'd want both, wouldn't you? Because <laughs> one can be printed away and they'll essentially steal your work by inflating it away. Now, that's what I'm worried is going to happen one way or another. If lawmakers don't quickly pass another sizable rescue package that includes help to state and local governments and more income support to the unemployed, then the economy will suffer another downturn, a so-called double dip, said Mark Zandi, chief economist at Moody's Analytics. Unemployment will remain in the double digits until well after the pandemic is over. And, I mean, one issue they have in the US is just the rampant protests going on and that are just degrading into riots. People are taking advantage of it and are going nuts. It's, 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 you know, even calling it a protest probably isn't right. It's rioting and looting. And you can see just in the footage there is shocking, shocking to a lot of people, particularly to us here in Australia, particularly to us here in Australia, you know. The jobless claims report was so grim with the ranks of those filing for benefits swelling to 1.42 million that it even got the attention of stock investors, a group that had been blissfully impervious to bad news of late. They pushed the S&P 500 index down 1.2% on Thursday, marking the biggest decline in almost a month. Shares in China, Hong Kong and Australia opened lower on Friday. Well, there you go. I mean, we... How are we looking? Let's jump over here. Good old Australia. Yes, yeah, so we're still over 6,000 6, on the ASX 200. So I'd, I'd say that's still pretty decent considering for how low it fell. You know, that's not much of a much of a movement there. It's not, not exciting. Not as exciting, you know. Lots of excitement. Big moves. Then go to crypto, Florian. <laughs> so what Bloomberg's economists say. The fiscal response to the pandemic recession is running out of steam just as the rising virus case count impinges on the recovery. The most critical near-term deadline is for enhanced jobless, benefits, enhanced jobless benefits set to run out at the end of July. A range of other programs will also need to be expanded and extended if policy is to avoid a swing from recovery driver to recessionary drag, Andrew Husby said. Democrats have proposed a $3.5 trillion package of virus relief 
That has already passed the House. Senate Republicans are working on a roughly $1 trillion plan. $1 trillion. Trillions of dollars they're talking about here. Trillions of dollars. And people don't think inflation is going to be a problem. Can someone explain to me how? How it's not possible? So, but disagreement within the GOP have bogged down a detailed proposal. That's not expected until Monday, and negotiating a compromise with Democrats may run through the first week in August. Here's the thing with a lot of these these wage packages. They did the same stupid thing that we did here in Australia with our JobKeeper. They had the thing where, where, you know, it's a fixed amount that you get paid. It's not a maximum up to that amount. So if you earn, say, only, I don't know, $600, you're getting the full payment of, of $1,500 or whatever. It's not adjusted. It doesn't say that's the maximum. You only get paid up to the most you'd earn. So people are better off on the government handouts. And you can't blame people for saying, well, I get more money if I don't work. I don't take the risk. I don't have all the costs associated with working. Oh, and look, there's there's riders just up the street. I'll avoid that. Wanting to stay at home and get paid more than going to work. You cannot blame people like that. That, that is a policy mistake in how they implemented these packages. Now, is it, you know, is it just that our politicians are just as incompetent as those in the States and vice versa? You know, I, I would think so. <laughs> I would think so. While the report also showed a decline in continuing claims that suggest hiring has picked up, the rise in layoffs from an already elevated level is a sign the labor market is going in the wrong direction. That could make President Donald Trump's case for re-election even tougher than polls already show. Well, what do you think, guys? Do you think he's in with a chance? I mean, will Sleepy Joe get in, or will they kick out Sleepy Joe and bring someone else in? It's going to be interesting to watch. Or are all the Democratic, you know, the democratic governors and mayors who are siding with these protesters that are destroying businesses that are just taking over and running rampant is that going to harden people and activate his base you know i i i suspect that's what will happen i think a lot of people are going to get red pilled over the crap that's going on over there the fact that their leaders aren't stepping in the fact that they're not you know they're not letting the police take control and they've, they, I mean, there's some issues in the U.S. and I, under, I appreciate that it's very different to here in Australia with regards to policing and they have to address some issues, but you don't want, you know, all businesses destroyed. You don't want complete chaos. You're going to get to the point where, you know, businesses are going to ha- start hiring private security they, just because they're going to have to. So we'll, we'll have to see if this will work in, in his favor or not, because the polls over there notoriously you know a lot of people don't want to publicly admit their support for the god emperor we'll have to see the v-shape of global rebound stands for vaccine supply lines depressed u.s activity more jobless point to recovery stalling credit card firms warn losses coming with white collar jobs cuts more than half of u.s business closures are permanent yelp says this is definitely something that we're studying that we're studying very closely, looking into the underlying numbers to see if this is an, an, an anonymity anomaly or something more concerning. Tyler Goodspeed, acting chairman for Trump's Council of Economic Advisers, said Thursday on Bloomberg Television. The unemployment figures following mounting evidence of a stall in the recovery as pandemic cases surged across much of the country over the past month. Key points for government and private reports include Credit cards spending by JP Morgan, Chase & Co. customers is little changed since late June, remaining about 12% below year early levels. There you go. Oh, that's good. That's encouraging. People aren't racking up credit card debts. Maybe they're all doing an afterpay over there too. The firm's economist said in a note on Wednesday, that follows a rapid economic rebound in May and early June. The rebound in air passengers has leveled off at less than a third of typical levels. Southwest Airlines Co. Co. vowed Thursday to adjust its flight schedule aggressively in response to volatile demand. A widely watched measure of consumer sentiment turned decidedly more pessimistic in July. Consumer spending accounts for around 70% of the economy. Restaurant bookings have stopped, rising nationwide amid virus fears, remaining at one-third of year-earlier levels according to open table data 
U.S. employment da- dropped by 4.1 million for the first week to the second week of July, according to the Census Bureau survey. We're seeing in the areas where the pandemic has come back in a significant way, like California, Texas, Arizona, mobility data weakened. Small business data shows some softening as well as consumer spending. Bank of America Corp. Chief Economist Michelle Meyer says, if there's a bright side, there hasn't been a collapse by any means. More of a more modest softening, Meyer said. And if the reimposed social distancing measures can help control the virus, one would imagine the mobility will pick up again and people will re-engage to some extent. <clears throat> well, we'll have to see. I need to have a shot of coffee, guys. What CEOs say? When in an environment where it is almost like we're starting a business from scratch, we have very strong bookings in place for the third quarter at the beginning of the month. Then over the last several weeks, with the spike of pandemic cases, we've seen the bookings slow down dramatically. We're also seeing an increase in cancellations. And this is from Southwest Airlines, Gary Kelly on Bloomberg TV. And how many people have piled into these airline shares, hoping for a recovery, hoping for a V-shaped rebound? People are going to step back. Look at credit card spendings down. People are stepping back. Maybe the only only thing that's going up in the U.S. is, is firearm purchases, because fortunately they have the right to defend themselves. We don't have that right here in Australia. We're too stupid. You know, we're too stupid to do that. You know, I don't think any of us believe that we're going to get even closer to the old demand until there is a vaccine that's widely spread. American Airlines, Douglas Parker on earnings calls Thursday. Another airline. Customers and businesses have adapted to a new environment. Some have re- reopened in US. Some have also been reclosed or limited again. We expect start stop to be the base case we can look ahead, Bank of America. Not everything is going in the wrong direction. Several gla- gauges have shown expansion in regional manufacturing this month. Demand for home prices has remained relatively strong as measured by mortgage applications. The reshuttering of the economy is largely a retail phenomenon, said Michael Englung of the Action Economics. Production is continuing to accelerate. Well, that depends on the production that's not dependent on imported products. We'll have to see if the trade war materializes. Has that all been solved? The China-US trade war? We haven't heard from it in a while. I've got a chart here. Let's see if it's still... Here we go. The trade war. Every time... Trump tweeted about the trade war. It affected the (laughs) S&P 500. There you go. That's one way to play the market. So in addition, the decline in continuing jobless claims over the past few weeks indicated that July's jobs report due August 7th could very well show an increase in employment, though it's far from guaranteed that gains would continue in August and beyond. The rate of separation remains extremely high, extraordinarily high, said Michael Gapin, chief U.S. economist at Barclays PLC. One report doesn't make a trend, and that's what we're obviously concerned about. So there you go, everyone. The U.S. V-shaped recovery, the rebound of their economy, is stalling. I'd argue it never really existed. I'd say it's an artificially propped up market due to rampant uh, money printing and distribution by the Federal Reserve over there. What will this impact have on the election? The fact that they've got all the social unrest, they've got the rioting all over the country. Will that harden red pill people? You get another term of Trump. Would that be a good thing or a bad thing for the economy? I mean, he's a good, confident speaker. That's his shtick. What do you think, guys? Let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. Are you playing the U.S. market? What have you invested in? Or are you just watching it from afar? Would you like me to create some more content looking at the U.S.? Let me know below. And thanks again for watching. If you're a fan of the channel and want to support us, there are a few ways you can. Simply interacting with the channel, comment, liking, and sharing helps us grow. You can financially support the channel by joining us on YouTube or Patreon, using any of our affiliate links at Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve, or KuCoin. You can buy a merch from Heiser Says, use Gold Pass from the Perth Mint, or support us via PayPal. Take care, everyone. Have a great finish to your weekend, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye for now.